Okay, this is 4x4 Thunder on the Sega Dreamcast. And it's a game that I've never really played. Well, not very much before. I played it on a demo disc years ago. And I saw Steve Benway's video from earlier today, the um, 1937 racing thingy. And I thought, I'll just, I'll give that a try. I'll try playing a, a, a Dreamcast racing game that I've never played before. And I think going back to some of these old games, I. I tend to remember them looking really good when they first came out and thinking, well, maybe now they don't look too good. But with this, I'm, I don't know, I'm quite impressed. It certainly looks as good as early two, um, ah, concentrating, <laughs> playing early PS2 games. So I'm not entirely sure what I'm meant to be doing, which is not really a good start. I know I'm meant to be racing and ramming and, and stuff. Oh dear. Yeah, I think I really should go back to some of these old... What was that? A flying cow? Oh, it must be um, Mark the Here's balloon flying around America? I think it's America. It's a desert anyway. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. Oh, oh dear. This is a lot of fun. I've been recently playing uh, Ridge Racer Type 4 on the PS1, and apart from the you know low resolution, it's actually a really good game, and it you know it's got the strange mechanics, um, but it's a lot of fun. And I thought, well, I really should go back and give some of these old Dreamcast racing games that I've never really played very much, or even at all in some cases, just give them another try after seeing uh, the 1937 game. So, can you change the camera? Oh, I don't like that. I don't know why you can't just change it with a button. It must have run out. But one thing I want to do is look back at some of these old racing games and really just work out graphically how good was or is the Dreamcast. Because I've been, if you've been watching a few of the other, um, other videos that I've been putting up over the last few weeks. I've been trying to work on like um, a sprite based engine, although they're not mm, they're not really sprites, it is 3D, it's just flat polygon quads that are always facing you, so it looks like sprites. And the performance hasn't been that good, and I, I was thinking the Dreamcast really must be able to push more polygons than that. And, you know, there's a case of having a game that if you don't optimise it, it'll always look bad, but I was thinking going back to some of these old games and trying to work out really how many polygons were they pushing? Ah, That's me talking and not concentrating. Okay, I'll give this different track a try. It's uh, like an indoor arena. But yeah, as I was saying, of waffling on about, I was really just trying to work out graphically how good is the Dreamcast when you try and look at it objectively without you know, thinking back to what you remembered it throwing graphics around like, or thinking about games like Shenmue, or you know, that kind of thing. Just thinking, well, a standard racing game, what graphically, how good is it? And I think having looked at a few, clearly the PS2 is a more capable machine than the Dreamcast. If you look at Gran Turismo 4, there's, there's no comparison. Uh, but I think some of the earlier Dreamcast, oh, sorry. In, uh, copy thing. earlier PS2 games were not that much better than the Dreamcast but I'm really stumped with trying to program this sprite based engine because I think there's a real problem with with the homebrew libraries because I've been looking at the amount of polygons that I can chuck around and I'd say once I get to a thousand or more it starts to get really unhappy and I've had a look at some of the documentation and I'm thinking you know the Saturn could produce nearly that many polygons I think and it seems that the way I've been trying to program this is by using OpenGL and the Dreamcast if you use the homebrew development libraries has a it's like a library that wraps around it, it pretends to be OpenGL, but the way that it works is very different to the way the Dreamcast works, and it's really slow because of it, so what I think I've got to do is program 
the the Power VR, which is the graphics processor, which is like your your 3D effects card. It's just a competitor. And oh, oh, there's another. Oh yeah, I'm racing. I forgot. <laughs> I think I might have nitros as well. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just I'm having fun anyway. But yeah trying to program it, I think I've really got to program the hardware directly and just seeing how fast I can get the, the graphics, but I've been reading in the documentation and there's this thing called direct rendering which means that you can write part of it in OpenGL, so all your transformations are in OpenGL, but anything that directly draws to the screen, so drawing your polygons, is done using DMA, which is your direct memory access, so it should be a lot quicker, but it doesn't look like OpenGL, so I've got to rewrite a lot of the code to get it to render, but I'm just really stumped because I've been optimizing and optimizing the code, and I've got it to load you know, multiple sections in and stream like Minecraft does, and that works perfectly fine, and even having the, the ARM chip do some of the... Ah, have the ARM chip do some of the decompression, and, and that seems fine, but it's just... I can't get the polygon count anywhere. I mean looking at this game nowhere near as close and yeah there's something wrong there's something wrong I, I think I'm gonna give it a go with programming a lot closer to the metal and just seeing where I can get with that I don't want to give up on this because I quite like the idea of you know writing a polygon based uh, game that pretends to be you know sprites because I think that's the way to go rather than doing it all in software, which I don't think is a really efficient way of using the hardware. This is looking really nice, so I think I'll actually go and try and play this and give my impressions of the game rather than <laughs> waffling about <laughs> graphics engines and stuff. Yeah. I'm playing this through a, a SCART lead rather than using the VGA box because my camera unfortunately doesn't let you switch between PAL and NTSC and I tend to find if you've got a camera which is expecting multiples of 25 frames a second then if you run an NTSC game through it it just looks awful and, and blurred and the VGA box is rendering at NTSC you know, 50-60 frames a second yeah this looks really nice bit of fogging but yeah pretty good certainly a lot better than the N64 and it's really smooth I think this was quite an early game for the Dreamcast I think it was 2000 999 2000 I remember playing it on one of the first demo discs and I'm sure there was a track on it which had this beach section it looked very arcadey um, I've yet to encounter that yet I think I've got to play the championship mode a bit more Ooh, I was lucky the car that I've got has got very high acceleration and good top speed, but it's got terrible uh, steering. So I thought it might be fun to give it a try. Actually, I'll put it in that mode. I can't stand that thing. I don't know why you can't just do it from a button. I don't know why you got to hit start, but anyway. Yeah. Oh, hang on. I'm back in. I can't control it like that. It's better. Well, I'm position 12. I'm really not doing very well at this. And there's me thinking, oh, this game's really easy, but I think you've got to drive it a lot better than I am. Okay, so A is obviously the nitros, which I wasn't using. Go away. I don't know if you can hear that vibrating. It's the control. It's... I've got an unofficial rumble pack which I bought when I first bought the Dreamcast because it was a bit cheaper but it's really strong and I'm not sure if that's a good thing it's uncomfortable I'm sure it'll probably give me white finger or something like that yes now we're making progress this is a lot of fun Yeah, I think I've got to go back to a lot of these old Dreamcast games, because the San Francisco Rush, I think it's called, which had a good reputation, but I've never played it, and I think I really just stuck to a lot of the, you know, the main AAA games, so you had Metropolis Street Racer, 
and uh, Sega Rally and well, Sega Rally 2 and I suppose even Sega GT. I played that quite a lot. I think I'll have to do a video on that one day because uh, I've got an NTSC copy of it and I had that years before it came out in the UK and really enjoyed it but I don't hear that many people talking about it other than the Xbox game. I'm ninth. I'm still not doing very well. So I've got this on practice mode so I can select more tracks uh, and it calls them enemies so I'm not sure if they're harder than the championship mode or not. Uh, I think I've got left. Oh, you can only go left. Yeah, I'm liking this. Oh, ah, crumbs. I'm not sure if the handling's realistic, but it's fun, it's really smooth. I, I think, I don't know, I think you've really got to make a mistake to, oh, like, oh, oh, no, I said it. Why did I say that? I think for it to, you know, crash or spin out, you've really got to do something silly. Yeah, it's a really nice arcade game. I, I've, I've got to give more of these a try. I, I'm sure I overlooked a lot of Dreamcast games um, by just sticking to the, you know, the AAA ones, as I said. And it was really just a case of cost, but they're a lot cheaper to pick up now. So I think I'll give some of these a second look. I'm not sure if that's the road or it's a footpath. I don't think I'll get first. I think I might get. Ooh, let's see. I'll probably get seventh if I overtake this guy. Oh. The annoying thing is, if you've got a wedding ring on, then the Dreamcast controller just vibrates really bad against it and it hurts. Let's say you've got to hold the controller in a slightly awkward way. Is it beeping his horn? I think so. It's quite rude. I've just got my thumb permanently on the booster now. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. I'm not even braking, I've got the right finger on the trigger to accelerate and my finger on the boost so it's almost like I'm using the PlayStation 1 control for accelerate and the Dreamcast stroke satin control for accelerate. Ooh, a pink elephant. Hmm, floating cows and pink elephants. Hmm, I don't know if anyone on YouTube's got a, an avatar as a pink elephant. Hmm, don't know, maybe. Ah, ow, that hurt. <laughs> right, I think I'll leave it there. I've actually quite enjoyed that. It's, it's the kind of, it's almost like a throwback to the games, uh, you know, your date on a Sega Rally. I would say almost like rip-offs, the games you used to get in the arcades that were a little bit cheaper but a lot of fun and I mean you can just see now it's it's really smooth and I know Dreamcast games could get a bad reputation and it was really just going back to that 1937 game thinking that frame rate looks awful so I'm thinking I really should just go back and you know, re-evaluate and, and just see how good or bad these games looked but this one looks pretty good so I think I'll give some others a try soon. Yeah, waffling. I enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.